Hello friends. Today I, Oleg Shlyamovich, Chief Executive Officer of Kazda AI, will tell you about a particular problem that developers faced during the recent months of August and September. So, at the beginning of August, many developers noticed a decline, so to speak, in their metrics. First and foremost, this affected impressions per user and retention. This was happening against the backdrop of Google's requirement to update the Google API to version 35, which became mandatory by the end of August. This overlapped with another important issue. From the very moment of release and even at the time of recording this video, which is mid-September, when using the standard Google AdMob software development kit on Android 15 and above, the close ad cross is positioned outside the visible area of the screen, effectively making our interstitial non-skippable. It's simply impossible to close it. Well, it's possible, but you have to perform certain manipulations to do so. This problem is actually quite easy to solve. One way is to modify the code in the AdMob SDK itself, but as you can understand, I can't recommend doing that. Or the second option is to write special adapters for the networks in mediators. But that's really a matter for other mediators. As for us, I can say that starting from version 4.2.1, we fixed this issue, but we realized for ourselves that this problem isn't related in any way. In other words, we fixed the close button issue, but the metrics didn't return to normal. We tested a lot of hypotheses, A-B tests, timing adjustments, enabling and disabling networks, none of it helped. We had to dig deeper. We looked at the distribution across networks. In any properly built mediation, you'll always find AdMob, AppLovin, DT, Google Ad Manager, IronSource, Meta, Mintegral, Pangle, Unity and Vungle. We also have Bigo and Chartboost there, as well as LoopMe, ISO, Oguri, and a number of others. So we decided it was important to investigate what changed at the specific moment our revenue dropped, and this is exactly what we discovered. The very top line here represents AppLovin. We saw that revenue had actually dropped across all other networks except for AppLovin. This strongly suggested to us that the problem was right there. We started analyzing what kind of ads AppLovin began to show. This is an interstitial. In a standard interstitial, around the fifth or sixth second, a skip button appears. Now let's watch it to the end. Let's pretend, well, it's a video after all. So I clicked it and we see that there's another five seconds of a mandatory redirect to the market, which we closed. And only after that do we return to the game. Thus, the minimum duration of an app loving interstitial has become 15 seconds. Plus, there's a mandatory redirect to the market. Because of the increased ad duration and aggressive redirect, the user churn rate actually went up. The impressions per download metric dropped in the game. It fell across the whole game. But for some, especially for app loving, it wasn't as bad. Thanks to a significant increase in eCPM, revenue stayed at the same level or even grew slightly. But in the end, for developers, the overall result was clearly negative in most cases. Since total revenue dropped, the increased churn rate ultimately led to a decrease in overall engagement time and as a direct result, the situation became worse. So what actually happened, in many cases, especially for hyper-casual and sandbox projects, was not a genuine win-win but was instead a shift in favor of one network at the expense of the overall monetization efficiency. What can be done? The classic and most common solution is to disable AppLovin. However, that is not necessarily the best option. In fact, it's a really, really, really bad one. The simplest option is to negotiate the return of the previous format. I can't promise this will help in every case, but nevertheless, it is the main solution. You will need to request that these kinds of ads are not shown in your application. Yes, this will affect your eCPM, but in exchange, you'll gain a number of other significant benefits. Your user churn rate will simply stop being so terrible. If that doesn't help, one possible solution is to go ahead and disable AppLovin as a network. However, it is absolutely necessary to negotiate with Aplovin in order to ensure that these particular types of ads are not shown. If your user volumes are sufficiently large and the account managers are reasonable, they might agree to this, but at the same time, they may set a condition that you conduct similar negotiations with all other networks. And when all the networks reduce their timings, then Aplovin will agree to it as well. If the negotiations are ultimately unsuccessful, you will have two main options available, either disable AppLovin or adapt to the new reality. 
you should look at your RPU to determine which option is more profitable for you. For some it might be more profitable to leave everything as it is, while for others it may be necessary to disable a plugin. But at the very least you can run an A-B test. What should you do if you have max mediation and the negotiations were unsuccessful? Well, in that case, again, there's only one option. You need to change your mediator and A-B test different solutions. Unfortunately, there are no other options. If you are using Cast.ai, you can simply contact your manager and ask them to revert a plugin to the minimalist template. This option is available from the moment this video is released. Conclusion. What we are seeing is an example of how quickly the market is changing. At Cast.ai, we are monitoring the situation and offering some solutions. Friends, thank you for your attention. I look forward to hearing your feedback. Colleagues, don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. Today, the content we're sharing with you is genuinely useful and very timely indeed.